Hi, I'm Allison Tandry and welcome back to DIY Salvation, YouTube's home to the resolution of the mind, also known as TROM. If this is your first time on this channel, and you've never read anything on or heard anything about TROM, you are going to find my lecture difficult listening. Instead, I invite you to watch the video Time Breaking the Illusion of Time explained to get a good grasp of TROM theory, or you can watch the video on how to do TROM level 1 if you just want to jump right in and do the exercises. Even that said, if you are finished now with level 2 and ready to go on to TROM level 3, I strongly recommend you read the book TROM 2023 in its entirety or portions of this lecture won't make sense to you. You've had enough time to do this while getting through level 2, so if you haven't, the time to finish reading the book is now. It's important to have an understanding of levels 4 and 5 before commencing level 3. I am saying this because levels 3, 4, and 5 are all related to each other in a way that I will explain further into this presentation. So, if you haven't done your studying, do it now. I'll still be here when you come back. You've finished Tron level 2. Congratulations! You've just taken a significant step towards resolving your mind. When I finished level 2, I noticed that my mind wandered less, I saw details in my environment I had not noticed before, and when something popped into my mind from the past, it didn't linger as long as it normally would. I was a step closer to ending the compulsive game I was in with my mind, and I was certain of it. But when I got to level 3, I was overwhelmed by it. I'm not talking about being overwhelmed by the actual incidents I was running, but more so over how long the task took me. It seemed to go on forever, and I ended up looking upon my sessions as more of a chore than a pleasure. I so very badly wanted to get onto levels 4 and 5, the advanced levels, and wondered if it was ever going to happen. The first time I tried level 4, I was only on level 3 for about 6 weeks. And my lack of patience cost me, as when I tried my first command of level 4, a flood of incidents flashed in my mind immediately, faster than I could write them down or even perceive them. I went back to level 3 immediately. Just that one command of level 4 was enough to show me I was just plain not ready for it. I should have known better. I should have perceived that I really wasn't finished with level 3 yet, but my impatience to get on with the program and my desire to have the status of a level 3 completion got in my way. After several years of traumaing, my attitude is much different, and the first bit of advice I can give to someone starting level 3 is that you actually want to stay on this level for as long as you possibly can. But I am sure at some point you are going to say to yourself, I am sick and tired of being a level 3. I want to be a level 4. And I very badly want to be a level 5. If you are a former Scientologist, I know exactly where this mentality comes from. When you are doing Scientology you are going up a chart of case states known as the bridge. Although Ron didn't necessarily intend this, I know very well that Scientologists base how they feel about themselves on where they are on the bridge. This is especially true when Scientologists talk to and about each other. They will say things like, hey, I just finished grade 3. Or, you can trust him, he's an OT8, and even sometimes in Scientologist-run businesses things like, you should hire this guy. He just attested to clear last week. But even for those who have never studied Scientology who practice TROM, there is that desire to keep a certain status like graduating from college, getting your driver's license, or becoming a black belt in martial arts. No one wants to be told they have to redo a college course after they graduate. No one wants to have to take their driver's license test again. No black belt wants to be told his skills are lagging and he has to go back a rank. Well, none of this sort of thinking applies to TROM. And if you try and apply it, you are going to land yourself in a lot of trouble. So let me offer you a new perspective, one that will serve you well as you progress towards the final resolution of your mind. You see, on levels 3, 4, and 5 you are pretty much doing the same thing. I know. I've made it as far as running some junior universes on level 5c and still have run into times where I eventually went back to doing level 3. And doing so did not bother me. The difference between level 3 
and the more advanced levels of four and five lies in the answer to this question. To what extent do you have to stimulate your mind to find incidents that still need to be time broken? On level three, it's easy. You just got off of level two and despite how great you feel, you are still aware that there are upsets from your past that need to be handled. So, you time break them, day after day, session after session, and even more of them appear as you start to see your past more clearly, and you in turn time break those. You time break until you just plain can't think of anything more to time break, and even when you do, as soon as you bring it up to be time broken, it goes right back into the past. You do that long enough with nothing changing, and you get yourself utterly and completely bored of the whole process, you will then know it's time to go on to level 4. And once you get on to level 4, when you run the commands, you will realize, hey, I didn't remember that happened until now. And you may even say to yourself how come this didn't come up on level 3, or even, wait a minute, this came up on level 3 and it's coming up again. And there's good reason for all of his happening. You are taking a much different look at your mind now. You are taking a look at it in terms of the overwhelms you've received and committed and in what order, and you are peeling off layers of your case in a way that you weren't able to in level 3, because handling your mind in this specific sequence has a deeper effect. On level 4 you are time-breaking incidents. You are just using a sharper scalpel to perform your surgery than you were before, so to speak. And so it goes for level 5 as well. If you've fallen back to level 3 because you've been overwhelmed on levels 4 and 5, then just look at it as your mind being opened up again once more to a degree that you don't need to, and probably shouldn't, try and stimulate it with level 4 and 5 commands. Never look at levels 3, 4, and 5 as statuses to achieve. One should be happy with whatever progress they make, whether they can produce the incidents by just reviewing their past as in level 3, or if they need to use the commands of levels 4 and 5 to stimulate them. Therefore, once again, you want to stay on level 3 for as long as you possibly can. You don't use a flamethrower to light a cigarette. You don't hop into the car to go shopping if the grocery store is across the street. And you don't use level 4 and 5 commands if you can produce incidents to time break just by reviewing your past. I trust I've made my point on this matter. Now let's go on to the actual tools one uses to time break an incident. At first when you select an incident, it may just be more real to you than present time. When this happens, first and foremost, remember how Dennis says to keep your eyes open at all times. Make sure, like it says in the manual, to be simultaneously aware of your present time environment as well as the incident. And you can take the incident bits at a time. First, you may just want to confront the physical aspects of the incident. The sights. The sounds. Then you can focus on your emotions. You can focus on the emotions of others. You can examine your postulates in the incident, and if you can, even the postulates of others. If you feel any shame, blame, or regret, make sure to experience that too, all while maintaining awareness of your present time environment. If tiredness or pain surfaces, make sure to experience that tiredness or pain while maintaining awareness of the present until that subsides. If you are having difficulty, remember you can run our eye, as always. But if you do all these things, and the incident does not fade back into the past as it should, then it's time to run differences and similarities on the incident. Now in corresponding with others on level 3, some people ask, should I do differences and similarities on the objects and people exactly like I did in level 2? Though I have not tried this myself, I can't see any problem with it. But it's more efficient to note differences and similarities between the incident and the present environment. And you run this the same way you did with level 2 in that you are going to note differences between the incident and present time until there is no further change. Then you run similarities until there is no change. You run back and forth until the incident has faded back into the past. Then, no matter where you are on those two commands, you stop. You don't keep time-breaking an incident once it fades. Then you make sure to do repair of importances before selecting another incident to run. There can be a lot to an incident, more than meets the eye. 
you can uncover postulates as well as emotions too. You can realize you've felt a certain way for a long time because of an incident. You can realize you've made a certain decision and have conducted yourself a certain way because of an incident. And you can free yourself of those troubling emotions and straight-jacketing decisions by time-breaking them. When time-breaking sensations, be aware that sensations change as you time-break them further. Numbness may turn into pain. Pain may turn into tingling before it finally vanishes. Don't stop until it does. Make sure that sensation is 100% gone. What starts out as grief over someone dying may turn into anger, then indifference, then you may even start to laugh over the matter. If something like this happens, don't worry, you aren't crazy. The laughter is simply a release, an expression of joy that the loss no longer troubles you, not that you think someone dying is funny. If you blame someone for an event, feel the blame until it fades. If you feel ashamed, feel that until it fades. I want to make a special note regarding regret, as it comes up often while time-breaking. Regret can be dangerous. You can stick yourself in the past with regret. If it comes up, it can manifest itself as a feeling of I wish this never happened or I wish that I did something else in this situation. Don't go arguing with yourself over what you should or should not have done. Don't imagine arguing with someone else over it either. You simply get the feeling that you wish this never happened or that you wish things happened differently and maintain awareness of your present time environment until the feeling goes away. Regrets may block you from perceiving an incident, and fears may tempt you to run away from one, but once you start time-breaking something, you better make sure you finish it. So if all you can feel at the beginning is the fear or the regret, then just focus on that until it fades, then time-break the rest of it. You want to get everything you can time-broken until it fades into the past, and do this bits at a time like it says in the manual. But if it fades before you finish your list of aspects to time-break like physical sensations, postulates and emotions, let it go. It's faded. Don't try and get it back. If there's more to be run in it, you'll get to it at levels 4 and 5. Practice doing the above starting with incidents that are only mildly upsetting, and once you've mastered this, then go for the more intense ones. It's a good idea to leave yourself as much time as possible for your sessions. I minimally go for 90 minutes, and when you start out, you may want to allow a longer time until you get a good grasp on just how long you need. You don't want to have to run off to work or have to take care of some other urgent matter with an incident from your past on your head. That said, it's inevitable you will start an incident and not be able to finish it before the allotted time is over. If it looks like something isn't going to get handled completely by the time you have to leave your session, start running RI as soon as you realize it so you can stabilize yourself enough to re-enter your daily life. Then make absolutely sure you finish running that incident as your first priority on your next session. In other videos on this channel, we've stressed the importance of taking session notes. One very good reason for doing this is that you may start running an incident and during that, another incident will show up. Now don't go running off on a tangent. Just write down any incident that shows up while you are time-breaking another and make sure to finish time-breaking the one you are on, then go to the one that popped up. I personally have had this happen to the extent that it took me a week to time-break the incident that showed up while time-breaking the first one, then the one that showed up during the next one, and so on and so forth. Once it all got settled, I felt fantastic, and was so glad I went to all the trouble. So learn from this, and make sure to take your session notes. Now it's only happened to me twice so far in the entire time that I've been practicing TROM, but it may happen to you one day that an incident surfaces that you have no context for and may make no sense to you at all. You simply don't remember this ever happening. I'm not going to now tell you that this is from a past life or some time space aliens kidnapped you, took you aboard their ship and hypnotized you or anything like that. And I won't because strictly speaking, it does not matter whether it's either of those things. My point is, if it surfaces, and it has any charge on it, whether it's emotionally charged, physically charged, or contains postulate conflicts and you can sense them, and they reduce while you time break, 
then you absolutely must time break what comes up. You absolutely, positively 100% and without fail time break whatever shows up, real or imagined, plain or unusual. If it's in your mind, and it's upsetting you, then it needs to be time broken, and that's that. If you are having difficulty deciding what to time break on level 3, a good idea is to write down all the names of important people in your life and try and find incidents with them. Another thing I have tried is listing places I've gone to school or worked. I have also listed emotions and tried finding times when I felt those emotions. Sometimes even just feeling an emotion brings about an incident to time break. Lastly, it's absurd that I have to bring this up, but we do get emails from people who say things like, I'm on level 3 now. I warm up by doing some level 2 exercises then I time break incidents. Well, if you are doing that, stop right now. You don't warm up a level 3 session by doing level 2. You stay on level 2 until you absolutely don't need it or feel the need to do it again. Period. I wish you the best on your level 3 sessions, and I hope you found my sharing experience and advice helpful. We are here for you if you have questions or run into any problems. You can also share your successes with us as well. Just write to tromguides at gmail.com and we will happily assist you. We are DIY Salvation. Don't just use your mind. Resolve it.